Good evening, good evening, good evening, happy people. It is good to be with you tonight. I am in uniform, as you can see. I came in um, Saturday from Washington, D.C., and um, got to preach, lead worship twice uh, yesterday. Got a chance to do my laundry, get packed back up so I can come down to the base. Had to do some uh, year-end reports for uh, the ministry, submit our four-year ministry plan to higher headquarters. Got all that done today. It was an early morning, was up at 3.30. And in my packing of everything, I forgot civilian clothes. And so I am in my uniform tonight. And uh, I will be doing another broadcast tomorrow and then driving back uh, tomorrow night after, after I get done work tomorrow. So it is, it's good to be with you. Um, I want to say a special thank you to our social media team and all that you do to help make the broadcast successful. I'm really excited about this uh, broadcast that we're going to be starting now. It's called Family Prayer Walk. I want to tell you a little bit about that. Kay Meyer, who is the founder and host of Family Shield Ministries, uh, her program is, is uh, featured on 50-something radio stations across this country. She reached out to me and she asked me and a couple other people to work with her on training families in prayer walking. Of course, if you know me, you know I'm all in on that. And so I said, yep. And then as I was praying about it and thinking about it, you know, God just laid on my heart that I should write a special edition of the of my prayer book uh, for pray, family prayer walking. And so I'm doing that. And so you're going to be part of writing this book. And um, I've got uh, 10 questions I'm going to answer in this book. And uh, let me just read through these so sort of give you a, a feel for where we're going to be going. We're not going to cover all 10 of them tonight. <laughs> uh, so prayer walking, your family. Uh, so question number one, what do we mean by prayer walking? Question number two, what about unbelieving relatives? Number three, what about unbiblical prayer requests? Number four, what role did prayer have in Jesus' ministry? Number five, what resources are there like a, <clears throat> a certain prayer app? Uh, number six, what if I was not the best role model? Number seven, can I pray with Christians who are from another denomination? Number eight, what if God doesn't answer prayer our way? Number nine is empty. It's blank right now. So if you have any suggestions on questions I should answer, I wanna, I'd want i love to hear your input on this. And then question number 10, really, what do we hope to accomplish? And it's, it's really, it's our hope that through this, families will be encouraged to pray with each other, pray for each other, that they'll grow in their prayer life, and that there'll be a, a positive influence of the Holy Spirit in their respective communities. So I'm really looking forward to this. Tonight, we're going to look at what do we mean by prayer walking. I want to encourage you to get out your, your notepads, your pens, your Bibles, because we're going to be, I'm going to be sharing a lot of great scripture passages with you on the topic of prayer walking, and we're going to get into that. So let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for today. Thank you for this chance to just to rest in your word, to be comforted by your word, to be challenged by your word, to be guided by your word, uh, to be equipped by your word. Father, uh, thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit in giving us the gift of faith. And Father, we confess to you that even though you prepared so many good works for us to do today, we didn't get a lot of them done. Uh, sometimes we chose not to do them. And so we ask, Father, for your forgiveness for we, for where we, we didn't do your will today. And um, we trust in your son's death and resurrection for the forgiveness of our sins. Uh, Father, bless us tonight in your word. Let us uh, be blessed by you with a good night's rest uh, so that when we wake up tomorrow and that opportunity clock goes off in the morning, we will arise uh, refreshed and, and ready to be about your work in your way. Speak to us tonight, Father, about family prayer life. Encourage our families, Father. Speak to those who are spiritual leaders in their families to um, encourage them and equip them and how to develop the, the prayer life within their families. Father, you know what each of our needs are. We pray all these things according to your will and in your son's name. And all of God's children, we all say, amen. Amen. All right. Well, let's get into this, guys. I'm really excited about this. I think this is going to be very practical. You know, when the coronavirus started, we um, 
start having daily devotionals, focusing on scripture that encourages you to pray. And we've looked at examples of people within scripture in their prayer life. And it's just, it's really been good. Um, you know, we believe absolutely that if a Christian is guided by God's word and by uh, prayer, that they can overcome any test, trial, temptation, or travail that comes upon them. And so, you know, really what the hope here is, is that we will be equipping our families to, uh, to be stronger in their prayer life and, um, and to encourage and to, to bring back into the fold by the power of the Holy Spirit, maybe those who have wandered. So let's begin with, you know, what do we mean by prayer walking? This is Jim Buckman's explanation. This is Jim Buckman's uh, description of prayer walking. This is what I mean by it. Uh, first of all, it's intentionally reaching out and asking someone, da -da -da -da, how can I pray for you? <laughs> so it, you're, you're actually asking somebody how you can pray for them. And here's kind of a key. Uh, you're doing this in a location where you know they can be reached again. And so when Kay came to me, Kay Meyer came to me with the topic of family prayer walking, you know, I kind of ran this through my, my filter. And yeah, you know, family members, we know where they are. We know where to find them, right? Um, so that's really key, that they're in a location where you know they can be reached again. Secondly, um, it is, this is prayer walking is not just walking through a community with your eyes closed, your hands up in the air, you know, praying like that. Uh, no, uh, prayer walking is actually uh, asking people how you can pray for them. And then when they share their prayer request, then the next thing about prayer walking is that then you actually go and really you do pray for them. You've promised them you're going to pray for them. Then you go and pray for them. And then the next thing, the final thing really about Prayer walking, I mean, it's very simple, is then to follow up with the person you offered to pray for, see how they're doing, and then repeat as needed, okay? Uh, prayer walking is done from a foundational belief regarding prayer, and, and what would that be? We believe that God listens when we pray. We believe that God desires for us to come to him in prayer. We believe that God responds when we pray, often in ways which are unexpected and at times even miraculous. We believe that inviting others to share their prayer requests is itself a witness to our Christian faith. And we believe that by asking others to share their prayer requests, the Holy Spirit has an opportunity to strengthen their faith or even present them the gift with the gift of faith. We believe that as people are blessed by receiving the gifts from this prayer ministry, they will become witnesses to what they have seen God do in their own lives. And you can prayer walk without literally walking. Uh, there used to be a thing called the Yellow Pages back in the day, and they used to have a commercial with the tagline, maybe some of you older people like, you know, my age bracket, uh, you might remember the tagline, let your fingers do the... Walking, remember that? That's right. And this cute little cartoon image of a finger walking across the pages of their book appeared. So what is a family prayer walk? Prayer walking with your complete extended family can easily include several different venues. You may be able to gather with many of your extended family in your own home. Prayer walking with other family members can easily be achieved in a phone call or with the use of social media. We're all learning how to do the Zoom and the Facebook and all of this stuff, right? It just depends on your circumstances. At the heart of a family prayer walk is prayer. Go figure. Encouraging family members to pray for and with each other. Celebrating God's answers to these prayers, working together to help each other as you are guided by God's word and the Holy Spirit. Jesus, quoting Isaiah, said that God's house was to be a house of prayer for all the nations. In Acts 6, verse 4, we read a scriptural job description for the very first pastors, and it has two simple priorities, preaching and praying. So then the question for us as believers is, should my house, where I live, also be a house of prayer? And if it was to be so, even more clearly, what changes would that bring? And what changes would that make? So when we talk about prayer walking, you know, I think one of the things that we're going to talk about in this book really is what is prayer? Because we live in an age that really 
talks a lot about spirituality and there's a lot of ideas out there about spirituality. And so we want to be clear what we mean when we talk about prayer. Prayer is the belief that we are talking with God, that he listens and responds. A person with a strong faith may even attempt to get God to change his mind about something. So here's some scripture passages. Exodus 32, verse 11. Exodus 32, verse 11. Moses sought the favor of the Lord his God. O Lord, he said, why should your anger burn against your people, whom you brought out of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand? Uh, Moses argues on behalf of the Israelites. Uh, Psalm 94, verse 9. Does he who implanted the ear not hear? Okay, this is a sort of rhetorical question. Does he who formed the eye not see? Uh, Romans 8, 28. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. Prayer is the expression of the desire to commune with God. We pray because we want to be with God. And so prayer is a way for us to commune with God. Psalm 42, verse 2. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Number three, prayer is a public statement of a personal sentiment. When we pray, many times we're doing it publicly, even if it's not out loud, it's, a, it's in a posture which can be seen public, publicly. It may be over a meal at a restaurant, for example. Prayer is a public statement of a personal sentiment. Genesis 26, 25, Isaac, Isaac built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord. Number four, Prayer is properly presented by the Holy Spirit on our behalf. And this is one of the real blessings about prayer is that we don't really need to worry about having the words exactly correct um, because the Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf. Romans 8, 26, we, in fact, says we do not know what we ought to pray for. I like to call the Holy Spirit our prayer editor uh, because the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. Number five. Believers pray God's word to him. So when we pray, we oftentimes pray God's word right back to him. You know, a child comes into this world not knowing how to talk. How does a child learn how to talk? By listening to mom and dad. Then they pick up mom and dad's vocabulary and they start talking the way mom and dad talk, right? And so how do we learn how to talk to our Heavenly Father? By hearing his vocabulary from the Word of God. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, through the gift of faith, then this Word becomes meaningful to us, and we talk this way to our Father in Heaven. Uh, Acts 4.24, when they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. And what did they say? Sovereign Lord, you made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them. That's called Genesis chapter 1, right? Psalm 119, 57 to 58. You are my portion, O Lord. I have promised to obey your words. I have sought your face with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your promise. So again, praying God's word, a promise back to him. And when, of course, when we pray the Lord's Prayer, for example, we are literally praying God's words back to him. Luther had this quote. Listen to this. I think it's really a good one. This is what Luther said. We were told in the second commandment, you shall not take God's name in vain. Thereby, we are required to praise the holy name and pray or call upon it in every need. Let me read that again. We were told in the second commandment, you shall not take God's name in vain. Thereby, we are required to praise the holy name and pray or call upon it in every need. For to call upon it is nothing else than to pray. And so Luther helps us see how the second commandment really is a commandment to pray. How do we pray? Some thoughts here. First of all, prayer must come from a believer's heart. Otherwise, it is a waste of time. Hebrews 11 verse 6 Anyone who comes to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. God will not share his glory with another. And the very first commandment addresses this. Number two, prayers should also include praise reports, thank yous to God, right? Not just an endless list of requests, worries, and sorrow. 1 Samuel 2 verse 1, Then Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord, and the Lord my horn is lifted high. Thirdly, a believer speaks plainly and without pretense, right? 
We talk plainly to God in prayer. But Abram said, O sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless and the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer. That was uh, one of Abram's servants. Abram speaks very plainly. That's how we should speak to our Father in heaven also. The Number four, the Lord's prayer is plural, not singular. And so this speaks to the communal as well as to the individual nature of the Christian faith. Jesus says in Matthew 6 verse 9, This then is how you should pray, our Father. And we know the rest of the Lord's prayer from there. Number five, prayer is pouring out your deepest held emotions to God. Hannah replied, I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. And so when we're sad, we should go to our Father in heaven with our sorrow. Number six, incense is a symbol, in fact, it's the symbol of prayer in Scripture. Uh, Psalm 141, verse 2, May my prayer be set before you like incense. And I know some of you guys are saying, Oh my gosh, that stuff stinks. All right? So you don't have to use incense. Nowhere in the Bible does it command you, whenever you pray, you got to light up one of those stinky sticks, right? Okay? You don't have to use incense, but it is scriptural, and many find it helpful. And so just understand that when you maybe uh, see that in other people's prayer life. Number seven. Believers have the freedom to observe patterns for prayer they feel may be helpful for their practice of prayer and witnessing to those who have not yet confessed Christ. Acts 3 verse 1. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer, which was 3 in the afternoon. And then number eight, our physical posture. We see in Scripture all sorts of examples regarding the physical posture of prayer. 1 Kings 8, 54, when Solomon had finished all these prayers and supplications to the Lord, he rose from before the altar of the Lord where he had been kneeling. So Solomon kneeled at the altar of the Lord with his hands spread out toward heaven. Matthew 26, 39, going a little further, Jesus fell with his face to the ground and prayed. 1 Kings 8.22, then Solomon stood before the altar and spread out his hands towards heaven. So he's kneeling with his hands raised. He's standing with his hands raised. Genesis 24.26, then the man bowed down and worshiped the Lord. So this focus on family prayer walk, right? Uh, so who else should our family pray for besides ourselves? Do we just pray for mom and dad and son and daughter and brother and sister and aunt and uncle? Well, no, there's other people we should pray for as a family as well. First of all, number one, uh, believers pray for those who are in authority, whether you voted for them or didn't vote for them. Uh, 1 Timothy 2, 1 to 4. I urge then, first of all, that requests, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives. Hallelujah. In all godliness and holiness, this is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. Secondly, believers pray for the persecuted. Acts 12, 5. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. Number three, believers pray for those who are persecuting them, even when the believer knows that God is punishing the evil. So even though God's punishing the evil, we still need to pray for those who persecute us. Exodus 8, 12. After Moses and Aaron left Pharaoh, Moses cried out to the Lord about the frogs he had brought on Pharaoh. Number four, prayer is something that the entire family engages in together. Acts 10.2, Cornelius and all his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. Number five, we should pray for our community. Isaiah 62, verse 6, I have posted watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They will never be silent day or night. You who call on the Lord, give yourselves no rest. <laughs> That's right. Maybe a cat nap once in a while. Number six, we pray for pastors, teachers, and others proclaiming God's word. First Thessalonians 5.25, brothers, pray for us. And finally, number seven, we pray for those who are in need. Acts 10.2, Cornelius and all his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. I'm going to wrap up with this. 
Should we only pray or should we also act? What do you think? What do you think? Should we only pray or should we act upon our prayer? What do you think? Hmm? That's right. We should act upon our prayers. Prayer and work are complementary to each other. Nehemiah 4 9. We prayed to our God and posted a guard day and night to meet this threat. That's Nehemiah 4 9. Isaiah 1 15 to 17. When you lift up your hands in prayer, I will not look. I will not look. Though you offer many prayers, I will not listen. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Help the oppressed. Defend the cause of orphans. Fight for the rights of widows. <clears throat> fight the good fight. And then lastly, Micah 6, verse 8. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly with your God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I look forward to writing this book with you on family prayer walking. And we're going to go through these questions. We've covered the first one from the table of contents tonight. And I look forward to going through these with you. I want to encourage you, if you have any questions that you think would be good to be answered in this book, please put it in the comments section there. Shoot me an email, however you want to do it. Send me a smoke signal, carrier pigeon, whatever. And uh, uh, I try to get back to all those comments and questions, and, and we'll try to incorporate that in here. I want to say a special thank you to everybody everybody who prayed for me and for our troops in Washington, D.C., it was uh, almost completely without incident. And it was also a tremendous opportunity to share the gospel with lots and lots of people. And so thank you for your prayers. And we continue to need our prayer, your prayers for our nation. And please always remember those of our service members who are in harm's way overseas at this time. I always ask people to pray for strength, uh, for success, for a speedy return home, and a successful reintegration. Pray for their spouses, pray for their kids and their loved ones, because they also make tremendous sacrifices. And they don't get ribbons, and they very rarely uh, get public acknowledgement. So keep them in your prayers also. Pray for Kay Meyer and for Family Shield Ministries for the equipping that we hope will happen through this as we encourage family prayer walks. We're going to be looking at some great questions coming up. And... Uh, I just, I, I just pray for God's richest blessings on this endeavor. And so thank you for your partnership in the gospel. Let's go in peace. Let's serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good night.